Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. Tech talk number 110. Tech talk. 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 Tech. In case you were wondering what Jeff looked like. Uh, <laughs> and if you've got a question for us, throw it in the chat room on Facebook or YouTube or wherever it is you're watching the show. And Jeff will reload the, relay those questions to us, and we will get to those in just a little bit. But you got lots of stuff to cover tonight, Jay, uh, George? Oh, yes, I do. I always oh. sit down and go, is there anything to talk? Oh, you, yeah. You found yeah. something. Yep, yeah, there is. All yeah. right. It's time for VoiceOver <laughs> Body Shop Tech Talk right now. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO. B S Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Unmuted Tech Talk Tech Talk All right Yeah Very good Uh <laughs> We got lots to talk about tonight uh you know it's there are so many things that you could talk about when it comes to voice over tech we like to have have you keep it simple but you know oh, uh sorry Yeah we'll we'll, we'll get to that though <laughs> Uh, people, there are other people out there that want to make it complicated. You got to have this and you got to have that. Just remember that most guys who are going to give you suggestions on your home voiceover studio are experts in one studio, their own. Right. And every room is different. Every voice is different. Everything mm. is always different. And how a certain microphone will work with somebody's voice, eh, I think it's like the mic you have is the mic you have. But uh, there are, As long as you have a good one, you know, things like that. But if you want to learn how to do it right, if you want to get it set up right, if you need repairs, if you've got buzzes or hums or stuff you don't understand, or your levels are really small and it's like, i got to gain all the way. Where do you go? You can talk to one of us because we're the experts in this stuff. We've fixed everything we have built everything in all sorts of places in 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 houses in i you know i've worked in in a place in cairo where it's all tile i'm like how do you create a nice quiet space with the <laughs> tile we figured that out though yeah and tile, uh tile is one of the most reflective services you can come up with that's true and if people <laughs> want to set up in there well that's their problem but there is a way to get around it Mm -hmm. uh anyway if you want to work with george where do they go they i guess they go over to george the dot tech that's our home on the web for performer friendly techs all right that's our slogan we want you to be taken care of by our team who uh understands you as a performer and we're not going to intimidate you and berate you into buying things you don't need we're going to Try to make sure you're using tools that are simple to learn, efficient, work well, and are reliable. And we'll, we'll give you the best advice we possibly can so that you can get through the intimidating stuff as quickly as possible. So we get you. That's georgethe.tech. Right. Dan? Well, if you want to work with me, if, you, know, if you want to put up with me, because... I'm going to tell you how it is. You go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com, <laughs> and uh, there I have my uh, my specimen collection cup. I want to hear what your audio sounds like. You know, a lot of people will say, "I got a buzz, I got a hum, I got a this, I got a that." What's wrong with it? I nobody knows how to describe things because everybody hears things differently, and there is a way it's supposed to sound, which gives us the the acronym whistle. 
what it's supposed to sound like. And I can generally listen to your audio in like five seconds. I'm going to know what's wrong. Usually it's turn your mic around. Uh, or <laughs> oh, boy, that's uh, a popular one. That's, that's a real popular one. Uh, or, or you've got some RF interference. I haven't heard RF interference in years. You know, I think because people use good shielded cables, they're not going to get, they're not going to get, unless they're next door to an FM transmitter or something yeah, like once that. Once every six months, maybe I hear RF noise. Yeah. You know, Rare. Or planes going by or stuff like that. Planes. You know? Oh baby. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but there's <laughs> ways to take care of that. And we're going to talk about that on the show. So go over to home voiceover studio dot com. And you can you can talk with me or submit a uh, a sample of my specimen collection cup twenty five dollars you can't beat that because you're going to hear exactly what it's supposed to sound like or at least I am and then I'm going to tell you how to make it sound that way anyway uh, George time for your tech update looks like you have a fair amount of stuff to hit us with go for it yeah so well the first big thing that was announced that you know again if you're under a rock or you don't care about Apple then you don't care about this. But Apple does have new iPhones. I don't personally, I, they're awesome, right? They're better, lighter, faster, blah, blah, blah. The thing that they did, that was the real splash, has to be, of course, the changing of the port. What? Yes. <laughs> what, what have they done? No, not the port. USB-C, my friend. There's oh, okay. USB-C on the on the iPhone 15s, both the pro iPhone and the standard iPhone. And so that means that, um, yeah, that means, um, yeah, sorry, those cords you got, <laughs> all those devices you have with lightning cable, well, finally, um, you don't need lightning anymore. So I know for a lot of you and for me too, I have to say, lightning cables are just, I've always been, at, well, you just got to have one or two. They end up starting getting, getting shredded and coming apart. And then in the meantime, you've been buying other gadgets, other equipment, other USB, this and that, interfaces, microphones, speakers, blah, blah, blah. And everything has moved to USB-C. The European Union thought, well, maybe it would be a good idea if iPhone also had that and stopped making people have so many wasted cables and have some universal connectors. And, and what do you know? They did it. So um, what's the, mess, the best thing about USB-C to me personally is that now a phone with a USB connector can do more things than a lightning connector. For example, because it's USB-C, the phone can now charge things. And I know all you Android people are going to tell me, I've been able to do this for three years, okay? <laughs> we get it. Android phones tend to be on the bleeding edge of a lot of things and Apple tends to be behind the curve on certain things. We get it. We know. But with USB-C, it means the phone can like charge your AirPods, for example, right? So if you're flying and you're like, oh crap, I forgot my charging cube or da da da. Now one can charge the other, right? That's the kind of nifty things you can do. But also it means that your phone can connect to external things in a different way than before. Now oh, your phone can plug into a USB audio interface. Um, if as long as it's class compliant, it should work. It can plug into an external memory card reader or an external hard drive, things like that. So it's great that it finally came to, um, to the iPhone. Now you can get that on the iPhone standard, the 15. You can also get that on the Pro. The Pro now has USB-C with 3.0 or 3.2, blah, blah, blah. Really, really, really stinking fast USB. <laughs> So um, the real, real geeks out there will be able to shoot, what is it, 4K 60p ProRes video from a phone straight down the cable to a storage device. So, wow, like an external drive or something? Yeah, because the problem with these super high-res, amazing whiz -bang cameras on an iPhone is they have limited storage, right? Yep. So you don't have to buy a super high-end version with tons of storage. Now you can just hook up an external device and it will stream that super, super high quality video right to your device. So does this matter to us? Not so much. I just wanted you guys to get some of the finer points. The other thing is the A17 Pro processor that's in the, is this confusing enough? The 17 <laughs> chip is in the 15 phone. Yeah, I know. Um, the A17 Pro 
is their first three nanometer processor, meaning that every trace inside there is now not five nanometers, but three nanometers. And that may not sound like a big deal, but it's a huge freaking deal because it makes it more efficient. You can pack more circuitry into the chip. It makes less heat, uses less power. It's just all kinds of amazing stuff. And it's the first device you can buy with this kind of a processor. And what's amazing really to me is that the processor you're getting in this iPhone Pro uh, is basically the predecessor to the processor that the Mac computers are going to get next year. Cool. So you're getting the newest tech is in the phone before it makes it to the MacBook and the lap, the well, desktop, which is, what, is pretty bizarre. I mean, what's their big seller anyway? <laughs> the iPhone. That's where it they really make their money. Is. That's where they're going to go really first. Is. The fact is, is, having the USB-C cable, that's going to save marriages, especially on road trips. Wait, what? Well, which, especially which, in... <laughs> In the families that have an Android and an and a iPhone, first of right. all. It's like, what, what What cord did you bring? Wait, we've got right. this block. We've got the two. The, uh, uh, but now it's just USB-C, USB-C. Okay, it'll get your yes. iPad. It'll get your iPhone. And it'll make yes, it like exactly. So it's, it's good to see that. So it's incredible technology. I mean, six-core GPU, six-core processor on a freaking phone. It's insanity, okay? Um Moving on to things that maybe feel a little bit more relevant to us, um, the new Scarlet is out. Uh, uh, fourth Focus, generation? Right? Yeah, there was time. Scarlet, uh, the fourth generation Scarlet 2i2 by Focusrite is available now. And what is new about that? Well, I try to sum it up with a few things. It looks a lot like the other ones. Um, but one of the things that the Scarlet 2i2 fourth gen has is that... Um, it has an auto gain setting. So if setting gain is always mm -hmm. made you freaking come up, break out in hives, it has auto gain setting. So what does that mean? You hit the little auto button, hold it down for a few seconds. The little ring around the volume knob turns, starts flashing saying, I'm listening to you. I think it flashes red or something. And then you perform. And this is the key thing. You do nice. need to perform at performance volume, whatever that is for you. Are you singing? Are you doing a character? You got to get at that volume, right? It will hear you. It'll set the gain for you. Done. You're set. You don't have to mess with it again. Secondly, if you don't like that idea and you just want to set it yourself, that's fine. But it still has a helper thing um, called safe mode. And what that will do is if you have safe on, if you actually do still manage to get to that zero dB clipping stage, it'll knock down the gain. It's not a limiter in the way that we think of it. A limiter would mean it would knock down the gain briefly, then it would come immediately back to where it was. This actually knocks down the gain permanently until you reset it. So it's just, it, and I think this, it's going to be interesting to see when people start using these, what engineers think of this. Are they going to like having a recording level at X level and then having it drop at some point to Y level? Is that better than the alternative, which would be a really, really low level or a level with some clipping or what, right? So I'm curious to see what engineers are going to think of it. But the good thing, I think, is that it generally means that you're going to have one point in the file where the level drops and then it's, and then it's consistent. So it would be very easy to adjust later. So I don't know. It's an interesting concept. The auto gain is not new. The Evo 4 and 8 and 16 from Audient has it. The new Mackie DLZ mixer has it. You're seeing it a lot more, but it's nice to see it in a you know basic two-channel audio interface, um, and it's about 190 bucks. So it's a little bit more than the last one, um, but it's supposed to have better headphone monitoring. It does have some form of loopback. I haven't verified whether that's a useful loopback or a non-useful loopback. But well, they had the the air setting on the on the other one, so it's they do have an similar. air setting still. Um, that has two modes now. One of them is like the other one where it just kind of brightens things up. And the other one is more like a V shape where it really gives you that big, bigger than life broadcasty sound. So if you want to sound more broadcasty, that's uh, your button. So it's got that. So a lot of new things on there. Um, my buddy, uh, my buddy, um, my buddy, that's so great. I can't remember. Ask Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Edgar, he, I know he's got one and he's prepping a video review of, of his. So stay tuned. Uh, check Ask Jim's YouTube when he has that video out. So he'll have a review soon. It, what it still does not have, though, is a monitor mixing knob 
which I hate. I really, really appreciate when you can adjust the monitor blend between the mic and the headphones with a knob. Still cannot do that. It's just an on-off direct monitor button like the last one. So I think we're missing out on that. Anyway, moving on, um, speaking of audio interfaces, Zoom is not a company that a name, at least when you think Zoom, maybe we think about the Zoom you know, conferencing software. But Zoom has also been making microphones, portable recorders, and all sorts of gadgets for a long time. But I just never, frankly, considered them up to par for pro-level studio recording. Well, they're working really hard to change that. And actually, a buddy of ours, Byron Wagner, Byron. decided to get one. Yep. And he put it through its paces. And he says, it does what it says it does. And it sounds really, really good. So what does it do? It's basically a two-channel audio interface, a la the Scarlett 2i2, but it has no gain knob at all. There is no gain controls because it records in 32-bit float mode. Oh. And so what it means is you connect your mic, turn on your phantom power, and hit record. Now, the levels you get in your DAW could be really almost anything <laughs> i don't know they could look like ones. almost nothing they might be off the edge of the screen the bottom line is when everything's set correctly with 32-bit float the level is corrected in post and there is no distortion there is no clipping there is no uh, loss of quality it just captures the full audible spectrum of sound so it's going to be interesting i'm going to get one as a demo unit from my uh, buddies over at Westlake Pro Audio, and uh, I'll do a little shootout sort of comparison test between that and the Rode NT1 5th Gen, which is a mic with 32-bit float. So that's something I have in my queue to produce in the next couple of weeks, yeah, and we'll find I'm more about how, the reality of all that stuff. And lastly, um, this isn't for voiceover specifically, but you know we're kind of branching out into more types of media production here on the show and in our businesses. And I've been using the Rode Wireless Go Me microphone, and I used it extensively at Podcast Movement a couple of weeks ago. And it's a very clever little package because what it does is it has a transmitter you wear on your shirt or the, your subject wears, and you probably see these on YouTube all the time. A little black square sometimes a little black square with a little fuzzy on top right um and you can put that on your subject and then you the shooter the producer the the interviewer the everybody else right has the receiver on the camera but the receiver also has a mic so the beauty of it is now you're recording yourself speaking to your guest your guest is being picked up on their mic and even cooler than that i think is the accompanying app the app shoots both the front and the rear cameras to either a, a picture in a picture, so your, your, your picture will be floating in the corner, or two separate video files onto the phone itself. So when you're finished, you have two full-frame videos of you and your, your subject and the audio, and you have it all separated, and you can edit it all later. So... It's really neat, and I've used it on a bunch of stuff. If you go to George the Dot Tech or the George the Tech YouTube, the last, I don't know, four or five videos, six videos, everything from Podmove and everything since was all done with this little rig. So um, it's really cool, very clever, and it's not expensive. It's only like 150 bucks. It's wow. really quite awesome. It comes with all the cables you need. It has cables to plug into a smartphone a lightning into a iphone a usb into a computer or other phone reliably Reli it, <clears throat> it i had a very good experience and, and because the app itself knows it's connected to the wireless it's showing you both vu meters for you and the subject so you know it's that, actually recording you know it's actually recording there's no guesswork there so um i gotta say i'm very impressed and again the price point is very friendly Rode also does have a Pro Series wireless mic now, which is more range, built-in 32-bit float recording, all this kind of cool stuff. And if you're doing production sound, it's, a, it's an interesting product. But this one is really for all of us amateur creators. You know, we're not doing stuff for the big time. We just want to get some great sounding audio from our, for our videos. It's a good option to check out. 
All righty. That's it for the tech news. All right. And if any of you have a question for us about your home studio or some other piece of gear or something that you know you want to talk about, throw it in the chat room right now because mm-hmm. I see Jeff. Well, Jeff's somewhere right now, but he's going to be. Uh, He'll be taking your question down, and we'll get to that in our next sub uh, section here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's time for my basic basics. And this is about as basic basic as it gets, because this is the problem with just about every home studio. And that is, because I can turn mine on here, because it's getting really warm. Uh, it's the air conditioning in your home or your neighbors. No matter how hard you try in a home studio whenever we look at it we look at it on a spectrogram so we can see you know what frequencies things are at see now there's there's that sound a soft whoosh yeah soft whoosh well this is a really quiet air conditioner but anyway uh how do you get rid of that sound because whenever i i get i get files from people when they submit in my specimen collection cup almost inevitably there is some brighter noise underneath 100 hertz or usually anywhere between below 80 75 70 hertz and below which by the way is not where your voice is unless you're tim tippets uh and <laughs> or, or james earl jones or something like mm-hmm. that who does a really deep voice um you know most most of our voices start at anywhere around 90 hertz 100 hertz and up and with women of course it's usually well above 100 hertz so if you've got air conditioning noise there's a couple of ways you can get rid of it uh one of my favorite ways is to turn off the air conditioning because when you do that it 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 takes that sound that you hear in the background and it turns it off (laughs) and it's gone (laughs) i mean it's it's pretty simple you know, and I always tell this story when people ask me about this. I'm going to turn it back on because it's getting warm in here. Um, you know, my wife would come home when we were living in Buffalo. And as you know, in Buffalo, it can get either very cold or very hot, depending on the season. And I would turn off the furnace and the air conditioner when I was recording. And, you know, you just have to remember to turn it back on because my wife would come home and say either, why is it so cold in here? Or why is it so warm in here? And I would say, my dear, I am making money and I am saving, saving money, money at the same, at the same time. time. So that's that's one way to prevent that problem. You know. Now sometimes we hear, oh, it's my neighbor's air conditioner because my studio is in a bedroom that overlooks my neighbor's backyard and his air conditioning compressor is down there. So aside from going over there and, and hitting it with a sledgehammer when he's not home, um, you've got to be able to reduce that kind of noise. Or if you, here's the other thing. If you live in an apartment and you don't control the thermostat, uh, one, you need to move. But two, if you can't control the thermostat, uh, you've got to find a way to get rid of that noise. And the reason I was talking about the frequency of that particular noise is because it's actually very easy to remove using a very simple filter. Everybody thinks this is like so sophisticated, uh, called a high pass filter or what's called a low cut filter, which by the way is the same thing. Uh, what you want to do is eliminate all the frequencies underneath where your voice exists from, uh, you know, 80 Hertz and up. And most of the air conditioning noise is usually below 80 Hertz and below the frequency of your voice unless of course the air conditioning vent is right above your microphone in which case it might grow a little bit outside of that frequency but all you have to do is take a graphic equalizer and you know it's arranged in lots of different uh you know you've got all the different frequencies listed there like you know 20 hertz 40 hertz 50 hertz upwards to, you know, 20K. Uh, And all you have to do is take down all of the frequencies below 80 hertz, and that will reduce that air conditioner noise or air movement noise down to well under, you know, get get your noise floor well under minus 60. Now, if you have a lot of traffic going by, sometimes that frequency is just a little bit higher and you've got to find ways to get rid of that. But the noise that we generally hear from air conditioners and furnaces 
is not the actual motor of the of the air conditioner or the the furnace or the the fan it's the air movement through the ducts that makes that noise which is why it sounds like a far off waterfall you know it's uh, it's air going through a uh, you know through the vents and it makes noise as it, the turbulence of the the air is there and that usually relates to about 80 hertz and below uh and so all you have to do is take out those frequencies it will not affect your voice at all and everybody worries about that but you know you can look you can use noise filters the problem with some noise filters is if you take a sample of something and you know there's like those noise re noise reduction features you know you get a, a sample of the sound and then it, you tell the the program all right get rid of all that sound everywhere but if your voice exists within the frequencies that you're trying to eliminate it's going to play games with your voice and it's going to degrade uh the quality of your of your audio so but if you take it out underneath 80 hertz or if you're a woman even under 100 hertz it will not affect your voice at all that's one of my favorite things to do because if you don't digitally play with your voice it's always going to it's always going to keep you ahead so any thoughts on that cuz you have to deal with that too yeah, well, what here's well, here's what I do at my place. I, I, I again, I, I don't know if I could get away with voiceover recording in this room all the time. I definitely don't have quiet on demand unless I go inside this big box behind me. Um, but if I want to record out here, um, I found the trick for me was we have it's an apartment building. The air blower unit is in the hallway, right outside my office door. It's right, you know, it's in the ceiling. When that thing turned on the first time, first few months I lived here, I swear I would jump a little bit when it came on because it does that. You know, it would scare the heck out of me. So long story short, it's much too forceful, much too much velocity. I just ripped the grate off the wall. Well, I took the screws out, took the grill off. Don't the tell the landlord. Register. I, uh, this actually took some experimenting, but what I found was I took an old crappy ratty beach towel and I just shoved it down the duct as far as i could really reach with my arm i didn't want to stuff it shut because i still wanted to have some warmth in here and some cooling in here but the airflow was much much too forceful in this room because it's a very poorly designed system they didn't load balance it everything when i had that towel shoved in there it basically did two things it slowed the airflow down like a damper and it, it quieted it way down. So I wasn't overheating in the, when the heater was on. I wasn't getting frozen when the air conditioning was on. And it knocked the noise level down dramatically. So if you're in an apartment with forced air, heating, cooling, this is something you might be able to try on the source side. And again, it, cause, it causes no damage whatsoever. At any time, I could just reach up and pull that towel out of there. Um, and restore it to where it was, but it really made a dramatic improvement. Yeah, and 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 some air conditioning vents have an on-off. I mean, you can put a damper in there, and it will shut off that vent, but the sound is still coming through mine, the vent. Yeah, mine does, but it's such an incredible force. So then, what do you get? It just squeezes the air through the cracks in the veins, and so right. you hear a whistling. You know, and you try to close it, so I couldn't win. So th this was my workaround, and uh, it's. Surprise! It's so cheesy, but man, it made a big difference. Great. All righty. Hey, if you've got a question for us about this kind of stuff, and you know we've been doing this show a while, you guys still keep coming up with great questions. If there's something you don't understand about your home voiceover studio or a piece of equipment or something you should should buy or shouldn't buy, put it in the chat room right now. We'll be glad to address that question right after this break. So don't go away. We'll be right back with your questions on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk right after this. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. Setting up for voiceover recording on the road can be a real hassle. You can't bring your boom stand with you. The solution? After six long months, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOverEssentials.com finally has their popular desktop stand back in stock. The Harlan Hogan Adjustable High Desktop Stand fits U.S. and all international microphones with its thread adapter. It features quick assembly and has a low center of gravity for great stability, making it great for home and on the road. 
The two-way adjustable desk stand gives you infinite height adjustment from five and a half to eight and three quarter inches. And the rubber ringed low profile base fits perfectly into the pre-cut desk stand slot of both the Portabooth Pro and Plus. They're back and they're keeping the pre-shortage price. Damn inflation has become their motto. The Harlan Hogan Adjustable Height Desktop Mic Stand, just $39.95 and only at voiceoveressentials.com. Thank you, Source Elements. Yes, they are our sponsors of the show tonight, and they've been sponsoring us for a long time. Not quite as long as Harlan, but a pretty long time, and we appreciate it. And the reason they sponsor us is because of their Source Connect software, which has absolutely been become a standard during the time of ISDN and then carried on beyond ISDN, beyond the time of these old boxes here on the shelf above me. ISDN is now long dead. That was the pro way of connecting studio to studio so that audio could be sent back and forth real time. They give it like a super high fidelity phone. Well, Source Connect is the heir apparent of that and it definitely is the standard because it's installed in so many studios. It's in the workflow. It's, it, it injects the audio directly into Pro Tools and Nuendo and whatever the producers choose to use, it's a great workflow solution. And that's why there's a certain point in your career where you're probably going to be asked to use it. And if that happens, make sure you're ready. You can go over to source-elements.com and just get set up with your account. Check out all the great videos over there on learning how to use it. And you'll start learning about how, uh, what it takes to have a studio at that level of quality. And if you're not sure if you're quite there yet, Send us a sound check. We'll check it out and take a listen to the audio. Dan's got the specimen collection cup. We've got sound check. We'll make sure your audio is where it needs to be to be Source Connect ready. But anyway, thanks again for the support. We got a lot of tech stuff to cover and your questions right after this. Well, hey there, it's David H. Lawrence with VO Heroes. And wouldn't it be cool if there was a very simple tool, drag and drop tool that would guarantee that the audio you need to upload to ACX or any other audiobook platform is perfectly set up in terms of the tech standards, the root mean square normalization, the peak normalization, the noise floor. Guess what? There is. And I want you to have it absolutely free. It's called Audio Cupcake. And you can find it at audiocupcake.com. I helped create this software. It was built to my specs and my standards for when I do audiobooks. And I know it's going to work for you. Now, it's only available for Macintosh. Uh, because you Windows users, you have the ability to use other tools that work for you. But in this case, you edit your final raw WAV file for a chapter, you drop it onto Audio Cupcake, and out comes the 192K mono MP3 file you can upload immediately. That's audiocupcake.com. Audiocupcake.com. I hope you love it. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. <laughs> And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. You know, it's fascinating how many different ways you have to process your audio, you know, depending mm -hmm. on what it is you're doing. For the most part, you know, I'm real old school. It's like get it right up front so you don't have to do any processing or filtering or yeah. anything like that. But if you have stuff like for audiobooks, man, they've got standards that are like, Let's destroy your audio. Let's make it as loud as possible without overmodulating. And, yeah. you know, so something like Audio Cupcake or, you know, all of the, the compression tools that you have and all the different software, they're great to have. And if they're, you know, if it's all simple stuff with, uh, you know, templates and uh, presets, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. You just have to experiment and find out what's going to sound best without it making sound without making it sound bad yeah you gotta be careful like any tool that's designed to level and increase your output level to a certain point they're all going to increase the noise as well right that's when everything gets louder noise comes with it so you still have to do some due diligence to to use these automated tools you know the lo noise level needs to be controlled they're not going to eq correctly if your booth has a resonant sound or it sounds hollow so 
I love the fact that it's an automated drag and drop, but you want to do certain things before that tool to ensure good sounding audio as well. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, like air conditioners, uh, there's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of different noises that you can get in your studio and, uh, you know, and as I say, turn them off. How many times has it been the fridge? You know, yeah. I mean, that's you know, like the fridge. I don't hear the fridge. Well, no one ever hears the fridge until you say, can I hear the fridge? Oh yeah. I hear the fridge. <laughs> Compress your going, eyes boom, boom, and boom, listen. Boom. You'd be surprised what you can hear. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We got a couple of questions here. And if you've got one, make sure that you throw it into the chat room because I know Jeff Holman is staring at us right now and saying, Hey, we got questions. And the first one is from Michael Bleha. Curious, uh, is voiceactor.com at all connected to voiceactorwebsites.com? Why, yes, it is. It's an affiliate of that. Uh, it was actually the original, it was originally my idea for, for Joe Davis and voiceactorwebsites.com to say, look, create templates, make it simple for people. And the technology to actually do that took a few years to develop, uh, after I first suggested it to him. And his business has grown, and finally, they, they, and they have all sorts of new templates too. So that's, uh, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show. But yeah, it's the same company. It's just they let you design it, and it speeds up the whole process a whole lot. So anyway, uh, Fiber Jazz, take it away. Fiber Jazz is something like the Chaotica Eyeball or an Isolation Shield. Um, can that be a reasonable solution for sound treating a subpar recording space when not at home? Funds are limited. One, um, two, three, no. <laughs> probably not, yeah. <laughs> the, the chaotic eyeball um, is honestly, is really designed to take an okay or decent room and making it sound much better. Um, that's what its intention is. It can't take a really bad sounding room or a really noisy room and make it sound better. And neither can any of the other things that go behind the mic, have a semicircle around the mic, reflection filters, things like that. They They're just not can't designed for that. do it. I have a video from seven, yeah, I know, seven <laughs> freaking years ago where I compare and record with a few of these products. Here's a little sample of me without Ooh. the chaotica and then with the chaotica and you can hear the difference so there's our control now we'll go to the chaotica eyeball edge studio will help you improve the quality of your recordings often without even setting foot in your home george whittem is globally considered a top authority in voiceover recording technology so let's jump he back in so doing without. he also has become an industry innovator by developing specialized services that cater exclusively he's also list. become an industry innovator by developing specialized services that can if anything it sounds worse what are you hearing I, it, i'll tell you what i'm hearing <laughs> <laughs> i'm hearing a boomier less clear sounding recording first of all is that what you're hearing yeah it, it, it's more echoey with it and i'm hearing echo just <laughs> as bad if not possibly worse yeah so yes the chaotic eyeball is not an instant fix whatsoever there are definitely other things that are considerably better. And if just type into Google Widom's World Portable Booth, you'll find my video here. This is from way back in the day when I was with Edge. Um, I do a comparison test with the Porta Booth Pro, our lovely Harlan Hogan's product. Often without even setting foot in your home, George Widom is globally considered a top authority in voiceover recording Here's technology before. services that cater exclusively to voiceover professionals. By Here's developing after. specialized services that cater exclusively to voiceover professionals. That makes a marked improvement, right? Right. Well, the, the trick with the Porta Booth, whether it's the Pro or the Plus, is to talk just underneath the top lip, mm -hmm. no matter where the microphone is. Because if you talk in the middle of it, it tends to sound a little bit cave like. Yeah. But it works great if you just talk right underneath the, the, the top lip of, the, of the, the porta booth. Yeah, you'll notice, I don't know if you can quite tell, but the microphone's not very deep in there. Yeah. It's, it, I didn't want it to be too far back in. That's one of the keys to getting a good sound out of it. But yeah, there, there are definitely solutions. I know, you, like you said, you're on a budget. If you're recording on the road and you're on a budget, it sounds like you're trying to get more work 
while you're on vacation or traveling. And that's going to make, that's going to be even more difficult. Like your, <laughs> your chances of booking, if you're already having a hard time booking at home, doing it from the road is the black belt of voiceover recording. That's even harder. So I, it's your, just your odds of booking that way are super, super low. Um, so think that, think hard about that before you make a big investment in anything um um for for a portable setup right? right it takes a lot of practice and and you need to also be really really aware of whistle dan what does whistle mean what it's supposed to sound like yeah if you don't <laughs> know what the end product needs to sound like of your voice there's no way you're going to be able to achieve that when you're on the road because you have so many more variables and factors to deal with so right. yeah, yeah. If, if yeah if you're on the road and you, you really need to find a quiet space and a good recording space, we have discovered that the back seat of your car works really, really well and yeah. actually better than, you know, an isolation. I mean, that, those things are yeah. kind of bulky to carry around anyway. Yeah. Uh, and if you're on the road, remember, you can only do one-offs on the road. You cannot, like, finish an audio book you know, that no. you've been doing in, in, you know, into your home studio and then you're in some hotel and you want it to sound the same. It's not right. going to happen. Nope. So, uh, yeah. And, and that's, that's a big mistake that a lot of people make is they're like, well, I can, I got to go have to record on the road. Well, one, you know, you don't have to record on the road, especially if you're just starting out. Uh, every audition. Yeah. is uh, important, but I'm telling you the million dollar audition isn't going to come to you when you're on the road. Although we do have the adage of when when you want voice work, what do you do? Make plane reservations, uh, <laughs> right? Exactly. Whenever you're sitting in the terminal, it's like not now. Yeah, but almost you know, guaranteed. Just let let your clients know that you're going to be on the road and not available. So you know what you do when when you let your clients know that you're going to be on the road and not available. What does that do? It makes that them puts you top of mind, exactly. and all of a sudden they go, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We <laughs> we needed you to do this thing." Anyway, um, one last one, at least unless one, unless you guys we, slip in another one before. Yeah, try to get some more questions in there, guys. Some more questions. Um, Jeff says, "Well, we have to get a new road cable for the video mic go to to connect to the new iPhone 15." Good question. Um, I don't know yet because, as far as I know, the i the USB C is a standard data connection versus the Lightning connection, so. I think any USB C to USB cable should work. You should would hope. giant should. should. Um, so I don't know if that might came with a USB C to USB C cable, um, but if it did, it should work. Um, the the video might go. The video, sorry, the Rode Wireless Me comes with a Lightning to USB C and a USB C to USB C cable, both right? Because they have cables for plugging it into a android a laptop whatever and um so that cable i know for sure well i don't know for sure do you know anybody with a new iphone unless you're marquez brownlee probably not so <laughs> we don't know quite yet i can i can uh, conjecture what i think is going to happen but um we don't really know i i just hope that the secret the kind of the secret side effect of the USB-C on on iphone means there's no more MFI, which is made for iPhone BS. Because that is what made things a pain in the friggin' butt with connecting to data and audio and video and whatever to iPhones was everything had to have a special certification and all this stuff to talk to. An iPhone, I'm hoping that that's gone now with this USB-C standard. So we'll, we're going to find out. You know who probably has that phone already is Byron Wagner. So we'll have to ask. <laughs> He's waiting at the end of the assembly line. Give me one of those. <laughs> he might be one of those guys who gets the one. Of the, uh, but uh, we'll find out. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll we'll let you know, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't buy one of those phones. I mean, if you have a 14 or a 13, I, I wouldn't buy one of those. I, I, I love my 14. I, I'm on an 11, and um, I'm going to buy a new one at some point because I'm slowly destroying this phone. <laughs> it's got it's got one little section of burned out pixels in the top right as a as a result of falling on my butt 
in Colorado on my bicycle and landing on the phone that was in my back pocket at that oh, moment. Oh, oh. About the worst possible thing you can do to your phone. I- that's like falling on your keys. It's a yeah. It's a miracle <laughs> that it didn't break. Like the corner is all. I mean, I had this case on it, but the corner is all scuffed and it's dinged up. And but anyway, am I going to buy the iPhone 15? I don't know. I I I'm so frugal. I'll probably buy the 13. <laughs> you know. What are you running I like now? To save money, right? What are you uh, running but, now? The 11. Oh, the 11. Jeez, and, you know like... what? When they when they went from 10 <laughs> to the 11, that was a big upgrade in processor it was a big upgrade in cameras they added the double camera for the first time it was a lot of big improvements and those improvements still look really great but my girlfriend with a 13 she holds her phone up and takes a selfie and it always looks better than mine the camera (laughs) is dramatically better now with the 14 and up maybe it's the 15 i got lost track now with the iphone 15 standard they have that 48 megapixel sensor so what that means is you can crop in on your video and still get a really sharp image at if you're doing a 1080p video, right? So that's going to be an advantage for sure. Um, but yeah, it's most of the improvements are really camera related at yeah. the end of the day. Which just is hard in, to do in, because the cameras on those things are amazing. I know. They are, they are just eking out little... I mean, every year that goes by, the improvements are... They're... they're you know, when they, like I said, from nine, from iPhone eight to 10, big improvement, 10 to 11, pretty big improvement, 11 to 12, decent improvement, 12, 13, eh, four. it's just, they they can't make leaps and bounds improvements at the same rate that they used to. I mean, they what are they going to improve? It's a telephone for crying out loud with a camera on it. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly will make me replace mine besides literally destroying the thing is the battery life just getting worse over time, which is just, that's what batteries do. You know, after five, four or five years, the battery life ain't what it used to be. Um, that'll force me to buy a new phone more than anything. But I'll still keep this phone because it's still a great stunt phone. <laughs> it's still a great second camera. It's still a great webcam when I don't want to use. I love bringing my MacBook and my iPhone and using that as, as a dedicated webcam. It's an amazing webcam. Uh, we yeah. may even start using old iPhones in studio to act as cameras for our show soon. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Well, we'll find out in a couple of weeks when we mm-hmm. get to that. We're going to train ourselves on some new software. We like this one, but we want to bring a real professional feel to what we do. We like how easy StreamYard. We, we, it's been very nice to us, very nice to work remotely. We just want to kick it up a notch. So right. if all goes well, we will be on a new platform the next time you see us, perhaps. And, right. uh, and it will look like we're Every network week will be TV. Apollo 13 again. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Sue's like, no, <laughs> no. All righty. Well, thank, thank you for all your questions and for tuning yeah. in to, uh, tonight or today or whatever time you're listening to this. And uh, again, if you want to get your questions in, All you have to do is write to us, and you will get to the front of the queue. And you write to us at theguys at vobs.tv. The timing of the graphic. Absolutely. I gave her lots of lead time to make sure that she she knew exactly where I was going with that. Yeah, theguys at vobs.tv is our email address. You can send your questions there. If you come up with something in the middle of the week, and you want us to answer mm-hmm. that, throw it there because you will get to the front of the queue when we start answering questions. All righty. Well, we're going to wrap things up in just a minute, but we got a couple of messages for you first. So stay tuned. We'll be right back on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the VoiceOver Body Shop. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. 
Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. You know, a little earlier in the show, somebody asked a question about voiceactor.com, and is it the same as voiceactorwebsites.com? Well, sort of. I've told this story a bunch of times, but my good friend Joe Davis, uh, who is, you know, just, he's a webmaster. And uh, he said, is there anything I can do in the voiceover business? And at the time, this was about eight, nine years ago, I said, you know, getting a website is always a problem. It shouldn't be a pain in the ass because you got to get a webmaster and they'll charge you for every change and it takes a long time to create a website. What if we could just do it by templates and have lots of different colors, lots of different backgrounds, stuff, you know, if you have a picture, you can change the picture uh, and, and change the colors. You have all this control using templates because you don't want your voiceover website to be nuts. Yeah, you want to show people how creative you are and stuff like that, but generally you're going to book work from how you sound. And the most important thing to have on there is your demos and a good, easy presentation for your demos. And at voiceactor.com, you can put that into your website real easily, along with maybe something even more helpful, your name and contact information. Uh, because what good is your voice if they don't know where to find you or who you are? Uh, so go over to voiceactor.com. That's voiceactor.com. And uh, check out what they have. You can start for free. Absolutely nothing. And then if you like the website you have, uh, you can move it on to an even better server with your own, uh, your own URL. And then you've got a website. And you did it like that, not in six months. Go over to voiceactor.com and get that done right now if you don't have your voice actor website. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as WOVO. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. WOVO is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with the, the chance, chance to, to learn, learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. living. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. All righty. Well, it's time to wrap things up and say goodbye and uh, for another for another week. Uh, next week, I believe Harlan Hogan is going to join us. Yeah, so right we'll, on, man. Well, we, we have a lot to talk about. We haven't seen him for a while, which is, you know, Harlan's in Chicago, which reminds me the next World Voices conference is going to be next october in chicago so maybe in 2020 in 2024 october? 2024 october 2024 Sweet. we're gonna be in chicago yeah that's cool because I, I have i have so much i want to see and do in chicago and yeah, I there's, had it's a, a great town cool yeah just signed the contract the other day because i'm the president and i get to sign those things <laughs> you have to that's right uh hey you know, we're here to tell you about your home studio and fix it. And if you want to work with one of us, you can go over to my website, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com and uh, see the services I have there. Or if you want to work with George, 
whose business continues to be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, where do they go? Oh, George the Tech. George and all George. of our all of our folks. In fact, if you call the, our, our phone number, press nine for emergency support, you might end up been talking to this guy over here because Dan's on the call queue. Um, but there, that's uh, one of the many services we offer over there. We have a team of voice actor friendly techs, performer friendly techs, media creator friendly techs <laughs> over there. Um, and uh, we're happy to help you out. If you like deals, go to georgethe.tech slash VOBS and you might find a coupon code over there. Yeah. It's sort of like having a pager. You know, you drive on beep, 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 beep. What? what? Somebody, somebody's got a buzz or a hum. Can you take this call? <laughs> yeah, I can fix that, mm. especially while I'm driving. Uh, let's see here. Um, F. Jeff we, Holman. We yeah. got his IMDb. Oh, yeah. Put Jeff Holman's IMDb on there. IMDb. Just because, just because he's Jeff Holman. Slash Jeff, spelled J E F F H O L M A N. All righty. Hey, you know, you can donate to the show if you want to maintain the amazing technical quality actually we're going to take it a step higher in the next couple of weeks we could use your support on this and you can donate to the show whatever you want to give us uh it's not tax deductible we're not you know pbs or npr or anything like that but it helps us defer the cost of this show uh and uh, we've got a lot of people to do that for us like greg cooper grace newton christopher epperson robert leadham Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Thomas Pinto, Greg Thomas, A Doctor Voice, Ant Land Productions, Martha Khan, 949 Designs, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, Maria Mackis, and Sandra Manwiller. All right. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, voice is a little rough from the cold I had, but yeah. uh, but it wasn't. Oh. You know, we we had a family dinner the other night, and I'm like, oh, my mom's going to be here, my mother in law, you know, nah, not COVID. Yeah, you know, so was yeah, That's absolutely. Uh, we need to thank the people who really make this stuff happen, like our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActor.com. And, and worldvoices.org. Yeah, actually, we actually tonight talking. the sponsor was Audio Cupcake, which is that's a, true. A product of VO Vo Heroes. Heroes. And David H. Lawrence. Yeah. It's an interesting it's an interesting product for you Mac users out there, which you mm -hmm. should all be. I just ticked off a whole <laughs> pile of people. Uh again, we need to thank our our amazing staff here who keep this show running. Uh Jeff Holman, show his IDMDB again because Jeff. Yeah. There it is. Make sure you watch everything he's in because he seems to be in everything these days. Dude, look uh, him up. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he helps us in our chat room and on Facebook, and he gets your questions from there mm -hmm. to here so we can answer those questions. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sue Merlino, who just gets it done, she was sharp as a tack tonight. Absolutely. Uh, getting all those cues in there, and uh, we really appreciate all the stuff she does for Sue's us. Sue's got stuff to plug, but she never tells us to plug. So one of these right. days she'll remember to tell us to yeah next Plug week what she maybe. does she hosts right. stuff on she has her own podcast she's a, she's a happiness coach she's a joyologist yeah joviologist <laughs> yeah oh, oh we also have to thank lee penny just for being lee penny <laughs> wherever the heck he is I, where is he come on france here. or arizona yeah anyway cooking up a storm Anyhow, uh, that's going to do it for us this week. This is, you know, voiceover is a very complex business. You know, you, you have to learn how to be a great voice actor. And your, your, your studio has to be right. But we've come to the conclusion, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body Shop. Or VO BS. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Talk. Tech talk. Tag after strong. All right. Okay. We'll see you next time. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.